Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC, we do everything DIY and today we have a service call for a Perlick beverage cooler and dispenser. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jumper Man Tech. We're working on a Perlick beverage cooler and dispenser. So it's a refrigeration unit. Oh wow, look at that. That must be the condenser coil. <laughs> behind there uh, that's not looking good considering how that cover looks like so this is a refrigeration unit but you also see a water pump here because inside here is a water reservoir and they use this to help cool down beer and other products we have a walk-in box here that it's connected with so we got kegs and stuff like that and it's you know interconnected with that to keep the beverages cool I received a message yesterday that this thing was freezing up. This whole pump assembly right here, this is the motor, this is the pump. This whole pump was frozen and I have a picture of that. Why did it freeze is the question. It's currently turned off. As I told him to turn it off to defrost the system, it's now defrosted. So inside these lines, is actually antifreeze so if you have too much or too little antifreeze you are gonna freeze these lines but I also noticed in the picture that over here it said that the temperature was 25 degrees it definitely shouldn't go down that low so we got to look into the controls as, as well let's uh, open this thing up and see what's going on off this main cover here it looks fairly simple you know standard little refrigeration unit got a filter dryer there compressor here it's like some capacitors and a relay and this is our condenser coil uh, the evaporator in this case sits inside here it's like a heat exchanger that's sitting in the water reservoir cham blades are dirty and you guys can see behind there that coil is packed definitely not a good sign but let's see what's going on here's a view from the top i opened this up see that green stuff that's water and propylene glycol which is antifreeze that right there is your evaporator basically and it's just the heat exchanger and the cold water gets cold the water gets cold from that heat exchanger getting cold and then it gets pumped throughout the system right there that I'm focusing on I see that little metal rod that is sensing temperature all right there's also dirt inside there this really should be cleaned yeah definitely need some maintenance here why did it freeze well that's a good question I got this right here this cryotech anti-freeze test strips made by Hercules so this will be a good time to check something like that when it's freezing and also on a routine maintenance call here is the test strip I'm gonna put it in the glycol let it stay for a little bit and pretty much we're gonna compare the colors on it the color change and see where our levels are at so the reddish part is going to be the percentage in glycol and we're going to color match it and it looks like this right here is going to be our best match so we're at 33 percent propylene glycol and then the green side we're going to look at this is acid corrosion protection we're going to be looking at the alkalinity we'll say right there and these two says unsatisfactory these two say okay so in that sense we're okay and we have about between 25 and 33 percent between these two 25 and 33 percent of uh, glycol in this system an idea of what it looks like in here we got this digital temperature controller that wire right there looks a little bit loose anyways these here are just switches 
one for the pump this is for the condensing unit this is for the pump pump condensing unit it's a little broken off anyways let's see what we see here with how it is what else we got here down there is that temperature sensor going in there refrigeration lines ain't too much going on over here let's see what's going on i'm gonna turn on the pump definitely came on and it seems like some water is possibly moving the pump is on i'm gonna turn the condensing unit on Compressor started, and so did the condenser fan motor. Sounds good. Let's put this cover back on. Hold up a second. Hold up. Condensing unit's running. The <laughs> thermostat says it's off. If it's off, why would this be triggering? Why would this be on? Now what that's telling me is that why did it reach 25 degrees? It's because it never turned off. So it kept running and running and running and running to eventually where this system started to freeze that water. It shouldn't be running at 25 degrees. All right, I turned it off for a second. I got the manual up here. I'll take some screenshots for you guys. This is made by Dixel, model number XR20CX. We have to see why is this running without the control let's turn it back on what's up with this thing so off this is a power button so it's displaying a temperature of 63 degrees all right so it's saying push the set key and release to see what it's set to Set to 31 degrees. Okay. And that should go away after a few seconds. That's just checking the set point. Okay, I got a diagram pulled up here. It says seven and eight is my supply. Seven and eight. So these two, the white and black, is my supply. I should be getting 208 volts. In this case, it might be 120. It says 120 on this control. Then four and five it's basically a normally open relay contact where based on set point it will cycle the compressor right so this is controlling everything why did it when we turned it on with this thing off why was it still on is that relay stuck closed so it's always so uh, providing power to the compressor so yeah and then this one here, this little connection, is for the, the temperature sensor in there. It says hotkey, IV probe. Is there a number on there? But anyways, oh yeah, 11 and 12. 11 and 12 probe. All right, that's what's, that was a sensor inside there sensing temperature. Why is this constantly sending out power? I'm at a very strange angle here, so I hope you guys can see. I'm gonna check the supply, seven and eight. I know it's clearly there, but I like to check everything. And in this case, we have 120 volts. Between these two, we have zero, and that is because there's no potential difference because it's sending power from four to five. Four is line. right 120 and then on the other side five to ground it's sending power through right now it should be sending power through because it's set to 31 right and it's 59 degrees in here but why when the machine was off right i'm going to turn it off that relay should close hey william you back there or carlos yeah. guys it was just as i suspected 
I had to stop because the building manager came by. I paused it, I started telling him about it. I'm like, man, this thing don't turn off. If you look right now, everything is off with the machine saying that it's off. So what did I do? I literally smacked it and it turned off. So what does that tell me? This thing is basically a relay. So between four and five, like I was thinking, uh, between four and five, it wouldn't, it, it was stuck closed. So it was providing power to the compressor all the time to where it eventually got too cold and froze this thing. So we need to change this control right here. I just turned it back on. We have a little snowflake saying that we're in cooling mode. It's 57 degrees. And compressor is running. I wonder if it got stuck again. No, it actually turned off this time. We had a stuck relay on there. It might work right now, but it needs to be changed because clearly there was an issue. Yeah, I put everything back together. It actually says over here for optimal beer storage and serving, a Perlick power pack should be set at 30 degrees Fahrenheit and with a four degree differential. It is set to 31, but water does freeze at 32, but we do have glycol in here, so it shouldn't freeze. But this thing never turned off, so it got ridiculously cold and basically that's what made it freeze and it's because we have a bad controller here. It says Perlick in the front. It says Dixel on the back. But in the manual, it's actually made by Emerson. Who made it? I don't know. I just know it needs to be changed. As far as this unit, what we're gonna do is also those connections that don't look good the plastic the insulation broke off but anyways what we're gonna do is change this controller here and when i come back we're gonna do a full maintenance we gotta clean out this tank just clean up this area for visual purposes kind of gross and we need to clean the condenser coil and the condenser fan blade and whatever else is out there wipe this thing down and bring this thing back to life so new temperature controller and some preventive maintenance and they should be all right so i'm just reading up on the manual so as far as temperature setting it was correct what we saw on google it should be set to 30 degrees fahrenheit with a four degree differential as far as coolant coolant solution one gallic of perlin coolant solution 33% and then 67% still water so we were in that 25 to 33 percent range I believe that we're good with that so we're just gonna have to change out that temperature controller and do the maintenance on here gonna wrap this one up here if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week and I'll catch you all next time